Okay, this video is going to be on surf fishing beaches near me. Now, when I surf fish, I'll go as far north to Sebastian area and as far south as uh, South Hutchinson Island. There are a lot of beaches between that area. Some of them aren't conducive to surf fishing. Some don't allow fishing. Some charge for parking. So. I'm going to narrow the list a little bit for you, and I've got 11 beaches here we're going to talk about. So let's get started. Up near uh, Sebastian, there's uh, Floridana Beach, and uh, an old timer always called this treetop. I don't know why, but uh, this is uh, a little bit limited parking. Uh, you're going to see, if I scroll out here a little bit, that you don't have a ton of parking here, and uh, if you get there early enough, you'll uh, be some of the surfers that go there, a popular surfing place. But anyways, the one thing you want to know about this beach besides the limited parking is at high tide, this beach will pin you right against these trees. So, uh, you know, you, that's not to say you can't stay during high tide, but, you know, your cart might get a little wet. So keep that in mind. Uh, nice deep water, though. It's going to allow you to fish even in low tide. And uh, boy, I've killed the bluefish in here pretty good using cut bait. So let's move a little farther south and we'll talk about Bond Steel. We're uh, even closer to the Sebastian Inlet now. Parking is a little bit better here. Uh, there's no gate to worry about. So you can get here as early as you want. Another deep beach. You know, I wish I, I lived closer to Sebastian Inlet, but uh, I don't. So. Uh, cost you a little bit in gas, but usually it's worth the trip. And uh, you can fish here all day because of that deep water. So that's Bond Steel, another deep water beach that I like. Sebastian Inlet Beach. Now, this is not part of the Sebastian Inlet Park. Okay, if I scroll out a little bit, I can show you that. There's the inlet and there's the fishing pier. I never really fished on the pier. I'm more of a surf fisherman. I don't want to fish on the pier. But if you are a pure fisherman, it's an excellent spot. And uh, the inlet beach is all free parking. There is tons of uh, parking spaces there. And there's good restroom facilities too if you're bringing the family. And um, you know, just another deep water beach. You can go north on this beach. You can go south. And uh, some people you know, if they know they're going to be fishing north, you can see some cars parked over here uh, on the side of the road. You see that a lot. But uh, another great beach. Uh, let's go to the next beach, even farther south. And this is South Beach Park. Now, this has plenty of parking, but, you know, it's a popular swimming beach. So, you know, you're going to have to... Uh, move south of the crowd. I put in my notes here. Always pay attention to these notes. If you go back to this video as a reference, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about each park and some tips. And One time I made the mistake of uh, going too far north on this beach and uh, there must be some reefs out there that are conducive to sharks. So, you know, you're, you're better off if you are going to go north, don't go too far or south of the swimmers. So let's take the next beach, Round Island. This is a great beach here, and um, usually when I fish on this one, I, I head north, and that's probably because my dad did, but uh, I'm sure there are fish south too, but that's what I did. I always headed a little bit north near some of those big mansions, and uh, this is a great place, and uh, this has good restroom facilities too if you have the family with you, and let's head farther south. Now, this one is called Queen Island Park, uh, Park Beach. And my dad always called this the paddle wheel. Let's go over here and we can show you where you're going to have to park. This is on the side of the road parking. And uh, we, would always, uh, we would always get on this beach and we would uh, we'd head south and um, have decent fishing here. They call it the paddle wheel. Because uh, if we scroll out here and go a little bit south, we can see something over here in the water. And that's what some of the old timers said was a, a paddle wheel off of a riverboat 
type craft uh, and a lot of other people with a little more knowledge might say hey you know that's not a paddle wheel it's just a a, uh, a steel uh, storage container but anyways there it is and if you can cast out a uh, hundred yards you'll probably cast near it it's a good idea to uh, to try to aim for that if it's attracting fish so anyways that's uh, that's near one of those mansions out there uh, when you're walking uh, walking south on that beach. Let's go a little farther down. Now here we're uh, we're south of the jetty at Fort Pierce. Let's scroll out a little bit and show you where you're at. There's the jetty there so gives you an idea not too far south of the jetty is uh, Porpoise Beach. And the only downside to this place is is once again it's it's limited parking. But that's about all you need to know about that. It doesn't matter if you head north or south uh, on that beach. Let's go to the next beach. That's Blue Heron. Now, uh, one thing I like about Blue Heron compared to some of the beaches that are that are quite a bit south of uh, Vero is uh, this is a deeper beach, and uh, I like that because you know if I decide to fish the whole day. I'm going to get away with it at uh, low tide where some of the beaches you just can't. It gets a little too shallow and you'll figure that out quick enough when you see swimmers out there that are out 100 yards and they're only up to their waist. So anyways, this is a good beach here and uh, this is gated so you're going to have to wait for them to open that in the morning but if you get there they're pretty prompt at opening it uh, you know early in the morning so Anyways, uh, that's a good beach there, and I usually, on this beach, uh, just so I'm by myself, I, I like to hit uh, quite a bit south on this beach. Another beach in this same area here, not far from Blue Heron, is uh, John Brooks Park, and uh, that's another one, too. If, uh, if you want to try something different, you can go there and... Um, Nothing really too special about that beach as far as limitations. The parking lot's plenty big enough. Let's uh, head a little farther south. We've got Mill Cove. This is one of those limited parking beaches, uh, but it's very popular. Uh, I have uh, definitely uh, pulled some pomp out of here. And, uh, you know, all these beaches, uh, you have to determine when the run is occurring and sometimes you can follow them you know they'll be at uh, they'll be at uh, Sebastian one day and they might be at uh, you know Middle Cove uh, you know a couple days later depending on the direction they're heading so but uh, this uh, this is another good beach here and no worries about what time it opens let's go uh, a little farther here and uh, this is called Blind Creek Beachside North. Keep in mind too, when you're looking at all these, you know, you got your addresses right here. So just use your, you know, GPS or your phone to get to these locations. And uh, you may have to review this video once or twice. But uh, anyways, Blind Creek uh, Beachside North. My dad always called this Little Mud, probably because of Little Mud Creek here. And there are a couple different places you can park. Now, this is the big parking lot, and that's the one I recommend. Uh, it does have a gate that you got to go around that's never open. Uh, but there is a, a road going down here uh, on the north side of the Little Mud Creek, and I, I wouldn't advise parking there. It's tough to get in there, and, uh, you know, there's only a couple spots, so... Uh, once you, you know, pull into this big parking lot, you're going to have to walk up here and you're going to have to uh, get to the beach and, and head north, you know, and that's, uh, if we scroll out a little bit, you can see a heavy stand of uh, trees here. And usually I would plot myself right about uh, a little bit south of that stand of trees. And there is definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of good fish in there, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of shell life so uh, and we got one last beach now they, they call this Treasure Coast Naturous and uh, that's a fancy name for a nude beach uh, it's really unfortunate this used to be one of my dad's favorite spots 
and uh, now you're just you have to deal with the scenery and trust me you know you're not going to see any airline stewardesses hanging out here on the, the nude beach you know anyways uh, I've gone a few times since my dad passed and I just I just can't handle the scenery and the people talking to me as I'm walking on the beach. If you decide to, to bear it, you know, you can go uh, north or south, but because there's so many people there, depending on the time of year, you may have to walk quite a ways. You can, you can see here, I'm not sure when this picture was taken uh, by Google, but uh, holy cow, that's one full parking lot. So anyways, but it's, it's excellent fishing. Uh, so it depends on what you're willing to deal with and and that's the last place on the map you know there are uh, there are, like I said there's other beaches but uh, you might be able to save a little bit a bit of time by concentrating on these 11 and uh, I think that's going to do it you know if you if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and I I hope I've helped you and I would love it if you leave comments about your beaches that you frequent. You know, maybe you're on the West Coast. Maybe you're up in the Panhandle. There's great fishing spots all over this state. And I would love to hear about those beaches. And that's really going to help these, uh, these new uh, people to the sport of surf fishing. If you can give them a, a few tips on beaches in your area and maybe which way you walk on the beach. If you want to go as far as doing that, it would would help all these people that are new to the sport but i think that's about it i hope i've helped you and that's going to do it for this video